you donate 450,000 hours per year. At 20 bucks an hour, that's $9 million. Now, I think you're worth a whole heck of a lot more than that, personally. But let's, yeah. But $9 million. And look, by the way, how much you get done doing it for nothing. Here's, I have a couple ideas. My first idea is, why don't we get our elected officials to work for nothing? Maybe they'll get a whole lot more done. They could look to you as examples. I think it would be wonderful. Here's my second idea. I think that you should bill them. Send a bill to the county, an invoice, 450,000 hours, $9 million. And then right below that, write beef stroganoff. <laughs> Paid in full. This brunch is your thank you for your 450,000 hours. How many of you in your lifetimes have had a $9 million beef stroganoff? <laughs> Think about it. If you, in fact, can call that beef stroganoff. <laughs> well, what I've done now is I've taken the word active and I've broken it down letter by letter. And each letter stands for something that I think tells the story of who you are as senior volunteers. The A in active stands for attitude, because you all have a great attitude. You have, I haven't met a one of you that isn't happy and smiling. And if you are, I have, if you're not, I haven't seen it. There's two kinds of people. There's the person who wakes up in the morning and says, good morning, God. And then there's the person who wakes up and says, good God, morning. You're the type that wake up saying, good morning, God. And I think that's wonderful. That's why you're still going strong. And you're not going to quit. You're not going to stop because your attitude is terrific. It's like the little boy who's out there with a bat and ball, and he's throwing that ball up in the air, and he swings the bat, and he misses. And he throws the ball up, and he swings, and he misses again. And he throws it 12, 14 times. He throws that ball up, swings the bat, and he misses. Now, you'd think he'd get discouraged. No. He sits back and he says, whoa, what a pitcher. <laughs> that's someone with a good attitude, and that's what you're like. You, ha you do not look at the negative, you look at the positive, and that's why you're successful at what you do. Best story I have on attitude, a young couple gets married. They have a beautiful wedding. They go to their, their what do you call that right after a wedding? Reception. It's been so long for me. A reception. And after the reception, they go to the honeymoon suite, and he picks up his bride, and he carries her across the threshold, and he sets her down gingerly inside the room. He closes the door, and then he looks at her. You know those eyes that you look at each other with when you just first get married? Those lust-filled eyes? It goes away about a week later. <laughs> and then you got 60 more years to... <laughs> Didn't we love each other once? <laughs> so he sets her down. He says, sweetheart, honey bunch, cutie pie, I want to get something squared away right now, right from the beginning. And she says, what's that? He says, just a minute. And he undoes his belt buckle. And then he undoes his trousers. And he slips his trousers off, and he hands them to his new bride. And he says, you slip those on. Oh, you've done this. <laughs> she looks at him kind of funny and she says okay and she takes his trousers and she steps into them and she says I can't wear your pants they're too big for me he said you just remember that <laughs> you know we got a fella down that's applauding that but you know I love my wife very much and I've learned to turn these jokes in a way that she wins <laughs> So it makes life easier at home. So th this was a woman of the, of the new millennium. And so she thought for about a millisecond, and she slipped his trousers off, and then she slipped her little, I, I used to be polite and say drawers. 
And then, and then a woman came up to me and said, my great grandma wore drawers, I wear panties. And I said, all right. So she slipped her panties off and handed them to her husband and said, you slip those on. So he stepped into her little panties and he's wriggling and wriggling and finally he says, I can't get into your panties. <laughs> Wait. See, I waited too long now. She said, that's the way it's going to be until you change your attitude. Uh, I happen to be Catholic, so bear with me. If you are Catholic, you'll go along with this joke, and if you're not, you'll have fun making fun of Catholics. So uh, maybe together we'll uh, enjoy this. It's about a fellow who goes to the confessional, and he says, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have committed adultery. And the priest says, Ah, he says. It's an Irish priest. <laughs> How unusual. <laughs> ah, he says. He says, Adultery is a very, very bad sin. He says, you've got to tell me the name of the woman. He says, or I can't give you absolution. Fellow says, Father, I'm not going to tell your name. Well, now, son, if you don't tell me your name, I can't give you absolution. He says, was it Mrs. McCarthy? And the fellow says, Father, it was not Mrs. McCarthy. I'm not going to give you her name. Now, son, if you don't give me your name, I can't give you the absolution. He says, was it, was it Mrs. O'Reilly? Fellow says, Father, it was not Mrs. McCarthy. It was not Mrs. O'Reilly. I'm not going to give you her name. Now, son, aren't you listening? If you don't give me your name, I can't give you the absolution. He says, was it Mrs. McGee? Fellow says, Father, it was not Mrs. McCarthy, was not Mrs. O'Reilly, was not Mrs. McGee, and he got up and he left. As he was walking out of church, his friend met him. His friend said, hey, did Father give you absolution? He says, no, nah, but he gave me three good leads. <laughs> All right, last time I was here, I gave you three words that I thought were wonderful traits to sum up volunteers, senior volunteers. I figured three words were too many. So I've, I tried this year to come up with one word, and I've come up with one word that I believe you all have in common. It's a word that, that works for all of you, and that word is active. I said, y'all are active people, am I right? That's right. Now, I've learned that active means different things to different people. I have a father-in-law who's 89 years old, and he considers it a wonderful day if he gets to the end of the day and he's able to look back on that day and say he was active. He credits prunes. For nine million bucks, couldn't they have given us one prune for a group of senior volunteers? The last word is E. My sister gave me this word, endurance. She said, you're talking to a seniors. Endurance is good. She said, it's stick to uh, A woman was on the radio, 103 years old, and they were asking her about her longevity. They asked if she'd ever been bedridden. And she said, oh my, yes. And twice in a buggy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end, end it here just by saying this. You have in your regular lives been successful in all manners of ways, but by joining RSVPs, by sticking with RSVPs, you've done something marvelous. You've moved from success to significance. And that's all the difference in the world. Shakespeare has a play called Twelfth Night. I understand it's playing at the Old Globe. There's a line in it, right? There's a line in it spoken by Malvolio. It, the line is this. Some people are born great. Some people achieve greatness. Others have greatness thrust upon them. I suggest that in this room we have all three. We have people that have achieved greatness, that were born great, and had greatness thrust upon them. The one thing you all have in common is that greatness. To Tocqueville. In the early part of the 1800s, nearly 200 years ago, said America is great because her people are good. I want to thank you. This lunch is a thank you because you are good. You are proving near the, nearly 200 years later that to Tocqueville was right. America is good because her people are good. You are wonderful, good people, and I thank you for your time and your attention. God bless you.